Hi everyone, it's Wednesday and this is Fanola Howard from How Great Marketing Works and this is episode 22 of Ask Fanola How. And what's interesting this morning, because I've just got a few messages of people wanting to know if I'm still swimming as it is November, as we know, and yes, I am still swimming and this morning was glorious and people also wanted to know how my swimming was going, was I progressing? And yes, indeed I am. So today was seven degrees outside. And what I'm working on in the swimming at the moment is how to increase the number of strokes I can take without stopping. So, um, and as always, I find great analogies for how we work, you know, and entrepreneurship and business. So how do we know when to stop? How do we know when to keep going? But yes, I am working on the length of strokes. Can I have the longest stretch of my strokes while I'm swimming? Can I last all year round yet again? I've already done one year, but I'm wanting to see how long can I stay in the water, stay safe, increase my distance so that I can get much more distance in next year. So yes, I'm doing it. So seven degrees today, but felt warmer than yesterday, which was 10 degrees. So, okay, let's get stuck in and thank you for your interest. I am committed, so we'll keep going. Okay, so Today is Ask Fanola How, episode 22, and the real question from the real entrepreneur, as I read it to you today, is my advisor, I really like this one, my advisor told me to price like this, but I just don't believe it. What do I do? Great question. And um, she goes into more detail. I know I should be increasing my prices. Very, very common question. It makes sense. Likely that the advisor in case was an accountant, so we've got to listen to those as well, but we've got to make sure we can, you know, do this. So I know I should be increasing my prices. It makes sense. And listening to your last session on pricing, I just wanted to follow up with my dilemma here. I get that I need to increase my prices and I've done the work on identifying what they need to be. I just can't seem to pull the trigger on it. Can you help? Yes, I can help. I can give you a couple of techniques and an exercise we're going to do today to help get you there, okay? So, and I love this question and it really is a block because if we can't feel it, if we don't believe it, it's very hard to increase those prices, to cover our costs, to have a successful business, etc. okay? So, um, and also I really like this question because it allows me to go a little bit deeper into this question about pricing that we discussed quite loosely in, well, not loosely, quite well in episode 13. So. Let's start with let's start with the obvious, okay? And I just want to get it out of the way in case somebody hasn't listened to episode 13. The obvious first step is to understand what your competitors are pricing of what what is the marketplace expecting in terms of price. So you need to know how you're positioned in relation to your competitors. What is the market expectation? What do you look like in that marketplace at that current price and at the price that your advisor wants you to take? What's interesting about looking around is actually kind of seeing where you're positioned yourself, really seeing where have I placed myself in this mix and where have I placed my product or my service in relation to this mix? And do I offer more value, less value? Is it is the reason I'm hesitating because so everyone else is offering so much more? Do I need to adjust something? Or is it that I actually need to increase my prices because I am offering so much more and need my price to reflect that? So start with the obvious, look around, see what's happening in the marketplace, see what's going on with your competitors and where you've positioned yourself in relation to your competitors and does that fit your long-term goals, okay? Have a little look back on episode 13 because I go into more detail on that there. The second thing I kind of want you to reflect on, okay, is that never price more than the market can bear, okay? because we can't price in a vacuum. Pricing is not a decision that you make in a garden shed or with your head down in a corner. Pricing is about what can the market bear? Because if the market can't bear that price, then they won't pay it and you don't have a business. So we've got to see what we look like in relation to our competitors, how are we positioned and what can the market bear? Now, I'm making the assumption here that you've taken care of all of that, okay? Because I'm very confident that you have. So what we're doing is we're going into the next stage because there's just a hesitance here. And I see this a lot. I've been, been advising on this for years. So you are not alone in this hesitance. So be comforted in that, okay? And my, my point I want to get across to you in this 
uh, question is, if you don't believe you're worth it, okay, if you don't believe you're worth it, then your customer won't either. So if you can't charge those prices that you believe that you're worth confidently, surely, certainly, then neither will your customer. And when you're selling or when you're pitching, they won't believe it. They won't believe the value. They won't believe the worth. So we must do this work. Like so much of what we do in entrepreneurship is about mindset, how you approach things, how you problem solve it. So let's problem solve this. It's the question is around, I just can't pull the trigger. It was around, I just don't believe this price that I should be doing. So let's work on this belief piece. But we do it in the knowledge and in the context of what the market can bear, okay? So here's my exercise. Always with these exercises, I ask you to take a piece of paper out. So if you haven't done it now, play it back when you have a piece of paper in front of you. There's always one sheet of paper. I do everything on one sheet of paper, okay? So in this sheet of paper, what I want you to do is we're gonna work on what's the reality that you're seeing here and where's your comfort factor and where can we move you so that you are actually pricing what you need to be pricing for your business to be viable, okay? So in this lovely sheet of paper, um, I want you to split it into three, okay? Columns, three columns, you know, one side by side. And I say three because I always think of when you are offering a range of products or services, I always think of the magic of three because it's a really nice round way of looking at something. So what I'm wanting to do is get you to play. So if you have three products, I mean, if you have two products or one product, this doesn't apply, but let's do them all in relation to each other because it helps in our customer journey. So if we have this lovely magical three range of products, you know, small, medium, large, and it's, you know, gold, bronze, whatever, you know, so, in each column, I want you to put at the top the name of each product, okay? So in your top row, each product name. Product name, service name. So product A, service A, product B, service B, product C, service B, whichever it is, okay? Let's just call it product for the purposes of this so I won't take so long explaining. Name your products, okay? When you name it, you give it power, you increase your belief in your own offering because you have solidity and certainty. Also a name also lends itself to uh, describing the value you bring. So if you haven't named your products or services, do so, it's really powerful, okay? Step one. Underneath each column, I want you to explain, explain the product, describe the product, tell me the value that you're bringing to that product. Tell yourself the value very coherently, very consistently as if you were speaking to your customer. Share the value. See then how it all connects. Like, see how your, are your customers growing through a journey? So we want to see what is the difference between each offering? Is there increased value between each offering? What does it look like? So we've named it, we've described it, described it, and we've shared the value. We understand what the value is of each product or service, okay? That's good work, you know, that's kind of grounding work and deep work in understanding what you bring to the marketplace. It should, in fact, already give you a little bit more confidence in your own product, okay? Stick with me, okay? The next thing that I want you to do in the line under that, what I want you to do is put the price under each product, okay? What is the price of each product or service and put it under it? I'm kind of wanting you to see it in its entirety and how it actually looks together. We see it in its entirety and we actually look, we're effectively looking at our business and what we're offering. We're going, okay, what's the relationship between each of these prices? What does this look like? Is there a flow between each of it? Does it make sense of how we go from one product or service to the next? And if they don't flow and if they don't connect, are you actually uh, bringing your customer on a journey, pulling them in and bring them on a journey with you? That's a real value of having connected and connected products and service and flow through your products and service. So consider that. You may have a business where there, there is no connection and they stand alone. That's So it means that you just have one sheet of paper with one product that we're looking at at that time. In the main though, there should be some connection in your product strategy. And perhaps we should look at product strategy another day. I like to see how things connect. When you're actually putting the price, which is where you currently are, don't write small. I want you to write big, right? If you're typing it, do it in a big font. So if it's typed 
and the rest of your font is size 10 like an aerial 10 or something like that make the price 14 i want it to be big so you can really see it i want to see what the reaction is your gut how do you feel about this price when you look at your current price and do you feel i'm too cheap do you feel i'm too expensive do you feel uncomfortable do you feel safe how do you feel about that price and i want you to remember that so is it that you're you know that it's too cheap and this invariably this is what i hear from clients you know it's too cheap but you don't know what to do about it okay remember that feeling you know it's too cheap usually that's the case if you don't think it's too cheap if you think it's on the money then i go back to the marketplace and check that okay so let's say that you grounded that and you made it size 14 of that price and you know it's too cheap and you're going i really want to move how do i move okay I want you then to make a, leave a space for a piece in between and then write the next price. And the price I want you to write next is the price that your advisor wants you to take or the price that you feel that you should be pricing at. It's the should one. So in your last row in your three columns with your three products or services, I want you to write the top level price that you want to put in here, okay? make that 14 again size 14 in font again or big in a marker if you're doing it on paper and what i want you to feel now is i want you to to when you've written it i want you to kind of sit with it and i want to know how you feel about this do you feel uncomfortable because this is usually what's happening do you feel uncomfortable at this rate does it just feel like too much of a stretch that you shouldn't be shouldn't be doing it how do you feel i want you to anchor that then i want you to take a moment and look at the value that you're offering how are you feeling now does it feel a little bit more believable than when you started this exercise when you actually see the name of that product because you've given it power and you've articulated very clearly the value that you're bringing to the customer you've really identified and kind of done bullet points of what are the key value and what is the transformation you're giving to your customer and then you're going, and I'm going, what, how do you feel now? How does that feel to you? Does that feel slightly less of a should? Does it feel a little bit more possible? Not quite believing it yet, okay? That would be my expectation. I, I'm kind of wanting to understand this impact of your gut. And the reason, this is not me arbitrarily saying this for you to dial into how you feel about it, because when you're pitching for business, and when you're speaking to your customer about your products and services and asking for the sale and saying how much it costs, you have to feel it. You have to be certain about its worth and its value because they will not believe it if you don't. So dialing into how it feels is an important part of your sales process, okay? So let's see where we are. At the start, we have this where we are now and we're kind of thinking we're a little bit cheap. And then we have this should figure of how much it should be okay now this is okay each of these emotions are fine because they're true for where you are now in your head and in your gut and how you feel about your business and your worth okay but our objective here is to move you okay so what i want you to do is play with the middle piece and the middle piece i want you to put in the price that is halfway between both okay so in that middle cut middle space that we we left that space i want you to insert a price that's halfway between where you are and where you should be okay and write that in and actually make it 16 size 16 make it bigger look at that halfway in between put that figure in and then i want you to go and this is actually really useful to do on you know on a computer because you can play with the figures and i want you to look at the halfway point and we're not done yet. I want you to look at that halfway point and go, how does that feel? And if that feels, if that feels comfortable, okay, at that, I want you to increase it a little. If it feels like too much of a stretch, maybe bring it down a little bit. If it feels like it's not a stretch, maybe bring it up a bit. So what you're looking for is a price that you can believe in, in this halfway point, somewhere in the middle of how it feels that you could pitch at this pitch and win this business at this rate and move yourself out of this stuck position in your pricing. Okay, this is how to pull the trigger. We are simply pulling the trigger slowly. Okay, so check in. Do you need to, 
is it halfway perfect or is the halfway point too little or too much adjust play with it like play with it that's the point okay so then sit for a moment okay and then i'll say to you okay we're not done the last i mean that you need to take a break cup of coffee this is where i go cup of coffee take a break and then i want you to come back to me and then what i want to say to you is we're not done yet because our objective is ultimately to take you to where you should be okay but where should becomes appropriate on point and worth it okay and absolutely what the market will bear so let's come back to this idea of what the market will bear and what i want you to think about is realize that the market will teach you itself what it can bear and think of the law of supply and demand so what i want you to do is you price at this middle point this is what you'll price at today from here on in okay and what i want you to think about is every year commit to yourself that you will look at your pricing to take and think of the price that you in this halfway point that this is just the start of my journey around price and i will take myself to where i need to be but i'm just going to take it at a pace that i can believe in and that i can deliver on this is not what you should do but what you can do okay so price for today at that rate and then choose a point in the future every year usually january you know this is our expectation usually january and increase to if it's not that top rate but then go a halfway point again bring yourself closer every year to where you can charge those prices okay that you should so anchor that in your mind that every year you will look at these prices and every year you will bring yourself closer to where you need to be okay and this is about understanding what the market will bear but i also have this caveat for you okay think about the market teaching you okay and this idea of supply and demand so this idea of when you fill your diary or uh, run out of product at this rate when you have met your goals your targets for what you do then um when you've met your goals and when you've met your targets then you can in when you fill your diary increase your price because now supply demand exceeds supply and what we always want to do is mark be connecting with what the market will bear and bring yourself to a point of where demand exceeds supply because when demand your demand or their demand for your products and services increases beyond your ability to serve at that level this is the time to increase your prices when you hit that point you can increase your prices so you don't have to wait till a year's time to increase your prices you can wait until the next time okay you can do it now or you can wait until january so allow the market to teach you when it's ready so that you can move step by step on a path that feels comfortable yet a stretch to bring you to where you need to be that is my tip for how to actually move your pricing so you can believe it you can charge it and you can actually get those prices okay and i want to see if i've left anything else out yeah sometimes you'll need to have a few steps before you hit that top rate so this has been ask finola how and you're more than welcome shelly thank you for joining us today and thank you everyone else for joining us today so this has been ask finola how i'm finola howard and this was episode 22 and our question was my advisor told me to price like this but i just don't believe it what do i do do check out episode 13 because that will also help you with pricing have a wonderful day guys and i shall see you next week take care